All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to another great episode on your favorite political talk show, The Truth with Ben Jokes. Now, few days ago, Fulani headsmen attacked a community in Benue State and they killed over 200 people. This is in addition to thousands of people who have been attacked and killed in their homes by Fulani headsmen in the last couple of years in this country. What is the reason for all these killings? They say Fulani people are dragging land, dragging land ownership with them. And you begin to wonder, how is it that in Benue State, Oshun State, Ekiti State and the likes, people are fighting over ownership of their ancestral lands with Fulanese that are from Katsina, Kebi and Zamfara? How did this ever become? How did we get here? And while we were yet pondering on that, Tinubu came out and began to advise southern and northern governors to give Fulani headsmen land for cattle grazing. Now, I clearly remember that in Buhari's first year, Fulanis tried this thing. They called it Ruga Settlement. They were asking for lands in the 774 local governments in Nigeria. What a demonic request to make. Just, just ask people to give you land. And one does not even need to cogitate to know that this is a plan by the Fulanese to take over Nigeria. They are looking for a situation whereby one day what is happening in places like Benue State and Plateau State will begin to happen everywhere in Nigeria. And an international group has come out to warn Southeast governors that they should not try that rubbish. That they should never attempt to grant such a demonic request. Before I show you how they said it and how Nigerians reacted, let me quickly show you this update. Don't act like Buhari. Negotiate with bandits, Gumi tells Tinubu. Kaduna-based Muslim cleric Sheikh Ahmad Gumi on Tuesday sought government's permission to approach and have talks with bandits who abducted about 287 school children from Kuriga Government Secondary and LEA Primary Schools in Chikun local government area of the state. The Islamic cleric insisted that dialogue was the way to go, calling on Tinubu to take a different approach from his predecessor, Muhammad Buhari, who rejected the dialogue. He punched reports that bandits invaded the Kuriga area of the Chikun local government area of Kaduna State, shooting at the victims before taking away at least 280 of the pupils and teachers from both schools. The incident occurred barely 24 hours after insurgents abducted 200 internally displaced women in Bornu State. Meanwhile, the government of the affected state has refused to dialogue with the bandits to release the school children and has also refuted claims that it had hired a private negotiator to facilitate the release of the victims. However, reacting to the development, Gumi said in a statement, the government stand of no negotiation with the bandits is an unfortunate position. My advice is that the government should dialogue with the bandits, not only for these Kuriga school children's abductions, but all cases. Also, the government should use the same approach it used in releasing passengers that were abducted on the Abuja Kaduna train in 2022 to release the Kuriga school children and others. I am ready to lead a holistic dialogue between the government and the bandits. It is my religious duty to do so for peace. I hope the present government of Tinubu will listen by dialoguing with the bandits because past administration of former Muhammadu Buhari refused to do so. Gumi had previously negotiated on behalf of state governments to free abducted people by bandits. Wow, what a shame. Look at what the APC has reduced this country to. And he was lying there saying that there were no negotiations under Buhari. That's a big fat lie. Buhari actually negotiated with them and paid them heavy sums. After all, they were the ones that brought these guys in to fight the Jonathan regime. 
and Gumi is just moving. So he knows their hideouts. He knows where they are. Yet, the government, the authorities cannot arrest him. And look at some of the tweet reactions. This tweet here says, A bandit wanting to negotiate with government on behalf of bandits. Yes, that is what is happening. And this tweet by Live and Let Live says, For the fact that Sheikh still speaks openly in defense of bandits says a lot about what is going on in the northern part of Nigeria. It is no joke that northern elites are behind all these atrocities ravaging the north. That is it. Because why is this man so powerful? And this is a big shame to southern leaders that they can allow all these kind of things to happen in this country. Now, let us look at how that international body warned southeast governors not to give out their lands to Fulanese for grazing. Look at how the papers reported it. International group warns Southeast governors against giving land to headsmen. Says landmass is smallest nationwide. The International Society for Civil Liberties and Rule of Law has warned the Southeast governors, especially the governor of Enugu, Abia, Anambra, and Imu states, that the land in the region was too small to give away to the headers in the name of ranching or settlement, reminding them that Southeast Landmass measures 29,525 kilometers, which is less than one or two states' landmass in northern Nigeria. The organization advised the governors, particularly Governor Peter Mba of Enugu State, to back off from any form of moves under whatever disguises or camouflage and join in rejecting the establishment of herder settlements in any part of the region. These moves must be done away with in the entire Southeast or be lawfully and popularly resisted, Inter Society warned in a report issued in Enugu on Wednesday. Signed by the principal officers, the group said it had observed that between December 2023 and February 2024, that despite denials and reasons given by the governors to justify the widely suspected politically motivated moves to establish the so-called non-native trailer parks or agro-industrial farms or mechanized farm settlements or modern cow ranching, among others, most social clusters have remained saturated with strong suspicions that the governors are being economical with the truth. While such moves have clandestinely been intensified at sub-state government level in Anambra states in 2022 through the Ministry of Homeland Security and its commissioner, in Enugu and Abia states, they are believed to have read their ugly heads since December 2023 after the electoral apex court judgment in the 2023 governorship polls in the two states. These moves are made more suspicious going by the fact that these governors and their governments, particularly those of Enugu and Anambra, hardly speak out publicly in strong condemnation of jihadist Fulani headsmen's violence in their respective states, including abductions and killings in captivity, sexual violence, open killings, property robberies, and seizure and wanton destruction of farmlands and crops. Now, these guys made a lot of sense here. Their suspicions are valid and cannot be ruled out. But I think Southeast governors should know better. They can't try anything like that. If they try settling Fulani headsmen in the Southeast, they will be starting something that the whole force in this country will not be able to contain. And look at how Nigerians reacted. Look at some of the tweet reactions. This tweet here says, There is vast empty land in the north. Let them go and graze in Sambisa Forest. Southeast don't have grazing land. From Agbo to Cameroon border, all you see is humans and houses. No grazing land. That is it. And this tweet by Ubong says, Hope Uzodima will be the first to give land to the Fulani headsmen terrorist. He is a Supreme Court judicial bandit governor. Mm. And Oyi of Lagos says, At Pitamba, at Alex Oti, at Charles Soludo, at Hope Uzodima, you don't need an international body to tell you that Igbos and Fulanis can't coexist. There are vast lands in the north. They should go there. This kind of Fulanis will definitely have problems with the Igbos. Anybody who is trying to do this thing is just set setting up a war. You know it cannot work. And this tweet here says, Isn't cattle people's private business? 
When did it become national issue? Southeast governors better shun releasing any land. Let them sort themselves out by themselves. That is it. Why should it even be a discussion? If you need land, go and ask to buy. If they give you, fine. If they don't give you, get away from there. And this tweet by Charles says, they know they wouldn't try that nonsense by giving lands in the southeast to Fulani headsmen to graze. If they try it, they will get what they are looking for from the people. Tinubu should give Yoruba land to Fulani headsmen for grazing. Mm. Anyway, I believe strongly that this can never work. It will not work in the southwest, let alone the southeast. The quest of the Fulani oligarchy to take over this country will fail woefully. It failed under Buhari, so how can it even succeed now? Buhari, who is the worst bigot? That is the person they trusted him most to help them take over Nigeria. But he failed woefully in every aspect of his administration. And they are still going to fail again. Anyway, make I leave him here. Make I still enter town. <laughs> Make I go get some Ogbonge political news where we na go like. Why? Because na because of na na I day here. So don't go away. <laughs>